Good to be together today. I want to invite our ushers to come on down, pass out our friendship folders, an opportunity to sign in your names, pass them down the row, learn the names of people that you are worshiping with, pass them down, back down the row so they can learn your names as well. So glad you're here with us today. Soup Can Man is coming on up here because today begins the last week of our collection of soup and food to go to the com community with our mission team leading us in our initiative of Shower the Springs with Love. So tomorrow is Valentine's Day and you can still bring in items to participate with us. And I just want to thank Soup Can Man for being our leader and our superhero through this journey. Thank you, Soup Can Man. Now right now, as we begin worship, let's stand up and say good morning to those around us. And Soup Can Man's on his way, so make sure you give him a shout and say good morning. Good Paul. 
join me in our opening response? God is good. And all the time, do you believe that? Good. Let Sunrise people worship God.
be seated. Kids, come on up. We've got candy. I know. Uh, come on, 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 come on. Come, come, come. Good to see you guys. How are you? Good. Oh, you're wheelieing down. Sweet. How are you guys? Good. There is a holiday coming up. Anybody know what it is? Totally Valentine's Day. And what is the topic of Valentine's Day? Love, friendship, candy, candy. So I am rich, but I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a sweet, sweet car. I am rich in love. That was a good answer. And I am rich in candy. Do you see all of that candy? So when I'm rich in something, you know what I'm going to do with my riches? Throw them out? No, I'm going to share them and give them to people. I'm going to share my riches with you and with you. I, that means you get candy. It's going to be awesome. So did you know that God is rich too? But God isn't rich like he doesn't have a sweet Lamborghini. He does not have like the coolest shoes. And he does not have a mansion like we have though he does have the sweetest mansion of all, which is heaven. Yeah, he's got heaven, which is cool. But his riches are different. He said that his riches are, you were right, love and mercy and hope. In fact, he says, I've got so much love, and then he tells us about it. And so would you guys join me for this verse? It's a verse where God tells us about his love. And so he says, my love, can you say that? My love. My love. And he says, my love is long. My love is long. My love is wide. My love is, wide. My love is high. My love is, high. My, love is deep. my love is deep. So we're going to do my love and then each one of those. So God says that my love, my love. is long, is, long. Is, wide. is wide, is high, is high. and is deep. He said his love is immeasurable. He's got so much love, and he shares his love with us. In fact, he pours his love into us so that when we leave, we can share his love with others. So this Valentine's Day, tomorrow, when you talk about love, when you get candy, remember that God's love, God's love is long, is, long, is, wide, is wide, is high, is, high, is deep. Good. Go follow Georgia the Candy Girl to Sunday school. It's like the Pied Piper, isn't it? Greetings and salutations. Happy Valentine's Eve and blessings on the Scout Sunday. Uh, I was kindly told that your senior pastor applauds staying on schedule. Duly noted. The Scout is obedient. Amen. Amen. If I close my eyes, I can see the blazing campfires, my old pals, I seem to hike the same dirt trails and fish those familiar streams again. In the uttermost corner of my memory, the firelight fades and the dusk intervenes. For my son, it was last month. But 31 years ago, I created that memory. And for the last 112 years, packs, troops, and crews have done likewise. From the scout's perspective, in the scout oath and law, one of the first things emphasized is God. Religious institutions, just like Sunrise United Methodists, charter over 73% of scout units throughout this country. The chartered organization relationship is the cornerstone of the scouting program. Make no bones about it. Absent the chartered organization, it would be akin to the federal government 
operating without the U.S. Constitution to guide it. They're not going to bite me back. <laughs> Let me be clear. Troop 62 does not exist alone, but alongside Sunrise United Methodist Church. Just as you, the BSA has weathered a pandemic, as well as class action lawsuits, Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and declining enrollment. But I'm convinced no organization has done and continues to do more to build relationship and character in America's youth than the Boy Scouts of America. I would also add patriotism, self-reliance, and reverence. Last week, Congressman Glenn Thompson introduced a resolution celebrating the BSA's 112th birthday and recognizing February 8th as Boy Scouts of America Day. In Mr. Thompson's remarks, he stated, and I quote, after the Bible, probably this manual, the Boy Scout handbook, has done more to shape my life and make me the person I am today. I second that. And I, we, truly thank you all for supporting the scouts and scouters that gather here on weeknights for the past 40 years. Scouting is a way of life. <laughs> Scouting is a way of life, not simply an hour a week. Yesterday, our Cub Scout pack spent the day at the zoo. We also stayed overnight on Friday. And one of the Bear Scouts asked me, Mr. Robbie, if you were an Eagle Scout when you were a kid, does that mean you're a bald eagle now? <laughs> I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. The bald eagle is the national bird and a glorious animal, so thank you for sharing with us today. I really appreciate it. Ah, oh, let us prepare our hearts for prayer as we remain seated and sing together.
Please join me in prayer. Lord, you are a great God and have blessed Sunrise United Methodist Church in a huge way this week through this amazing congregation. We begin by praising you for the generous donors that have stepped up to help balance the 2022 budget with additional pledges. Next, you have inspired so many of us to give food in our food drive for the community of Colorado Springs to help those that are food insecure. And finally, you worked through countless people in this church that assisted with the first phases of our refugee resettlement project, from donating money and apartment furnishings to the planning and execution of staging an apartment for the Shirzoe family from Afghanistan. And so many more are stepping up to get involved. The generosity in this church can only be tied back to your spirit working in us to be your hands and your feet. We praise you, Lord. Thank you. While we praise you, we also ask you to guide and give strength and healing to those in our community that need food, that need shelter, and have found themselves in a season of darkness and insecurity. May each person receiving food from our food drive feel your spirit in some way. <clears throat> Be with those who are lonely, those that are sick and still dealing with COVID and other challenging health conditions. Continue to strengthen and encourage our first responders that are on the front lines. Be with those that are new to our community, such as refugees settling in our neighborhoods. As we serve others in our community, we ask for strength to speak your name boldly as you call us to do. Lord, looking beyond our state and country's borders, we pray for the tensions in Europe with the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. Please wrap your arms around the key leaders that are involved in this situation and help peace prevail. Give them your wisdom and your boldness to speak towards peaceful and truthful solutions. God, we recognize that we live in a fallen world and any sort of forgiveness and love has to begin with us, admitting that we need you and that we fall short in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds. Let us now take a moment to do personal business with you, Lord, right now. It is because of what you did for us on the cross, Lord, that we have an opportunity to ask for forgiveness and the strength to forgive others that have caused us harm. It is because of this we take time now to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Skip. Years ago, my friend Paul was singing in a bluegrass band and touring around. And he's looking forward to retirement chapter of life that lies ahead and excited to be getting back into that and dedicating more of his minutes of his remaining years to that. And I'm really excited that Paul is here with us today to share a tune, Wide River to Cross. But in this moment, I invite our ushers to come forward. And those of you that are at home, know that you can join us in our offering right now by texting a gift to Sunrise at 719 270-4478 or you can always mail in a gift to Sunrise but would you everyone just join me in saying hi Paul <laughs> oh hello I'm going to begin this morning by reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians uh, setting up this song um, this is from Philippians 3 verses 12 through 14 not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, 
forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. There's a sorrow in the wind Blowing down the road I've been I can hear it cry while shadows steal the sun But I cannot look back now I've come too far to turn around And there's still a race ahead I must run I'm only halfway home I've got a journey on to where I'll find the things that I have lost I've come a long long road still I've got miles to go I've got a wide, wide river to cross. I have stumbled, I have strayed. You can trace the tracks I've made All across the memories my heart recalls But I'm still a refugee Won't you say a prayer for me Cause sometimes even a strong soldier falls I'm only halfway home I've got a journey on To where I'll find The things that I have lost I've come a long, long road Still I've got my house to go I've got a wide, wide river to cross got a journey on to where I'll find the things that I have lost. I've come a long, long road. Still I've got my house to go. I've got a wide, wide river to cross. I'm only halfway home I've got a journey on To where I'll find The things that I have lost I've come a long, long road Still I've got my house to go I've got a wide, wide river I've got a wide, wide river to cross. Yes, I've got a wide, wide river to cross.
Let us stand together. God's people said, Amen. And you may be seated. Good morning, Sunrise. Uh, what a glorious day. Our worship, it's been like a rich feast, hasn't it? Just, uh, um, just a smorgasbord of uh, amazing and wonderful things. Uh, we are blessed to be here today. I ask Skip Wells to return to give us an update on our refugee project. Thank you. You bet. Hey, good morning, Sunrise. Uh, Paul sang it really well, um, talking about the wide river to cross. It was in this space last summer that many of you sat here and listened to uh, Dr. Dr. Vin Chung, and he shared his testimony, and some of you read his book about uh, being a refugee coming out of Vietnam, and it was very powerful, and what a wide river he had to cross with he and his family, and 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 the, the the song is so true. You're only halfway there. Because once you get here, you learn a whole new culture. And you don't have any possessions. And you have to learn a language and so on. That message inspired us to, to adopt some refugees ourselves. And I'm excited to say that we turned kind of the inspiration into action. And last week, we were able to, um, uh, to uh, furnish uh, an apartment with the help of all of you. <laughs> with donations of money, up to $6,000. Uh, we had apartment furnishings from kitchen utensils to all of the furniture for this family of six that arrived from Afghanistan last week. And it was a blessing to be able to help them in one this small, small way. And I thank you for stepping up. We had over 70 people that were, were involved in various ways uh, helping this family. You've noticed that there's a giving tree out here in the back, and we have a few additional things that we can, we can get from you if you have, have them in your household. Um, we raised so many furnishings last week, we can sponsor another family. So there's going to be a family coming from the country of Jordan in two weeks, so we're going to uh, support them, and then complement and supplement it with the, uh, the, um, the giving tree. There's some items on there if you have a chance to look at that and see if you have something in your house that you can contribute. Um, it is a blessing to be part of this ministry. Thank you again for your participation. If you have additional questions, you want to find out more about this ministry, please see the newsletter article that came out, Sunrise Church, this week. There's a wonderful article in there. It lists the steering committee, a refugee steering committee in there. Any of the members of the steering committee can answer your questions. Um, if you want to help in any way, we'd love to uh, help you learn more about what we're doing here with, with refugees. And we're just beginning. We're prayerfully deciding where this takes us after we kind of adopt and sponsor these couple of families. And we're going to have some mentors that will help them on an ongoing basis as well. So thanks again for your support, and we look forward to seeing what God is going to do in our church with this wonderful project. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Thanks to the steering team and our ongoing effort uh, in the days ahead. It's going to be awesome. I uh, also wanted to acknowledge that I'm planning to do a 10-week uh, time together class on uh, grief and loss and uh, using a curriculum to uh, guide us, but um, an invitation is out there. This is uh, prior to my retirement, my final class uh, with folks. It'll be exclusively Zoom. It's available on Monday evenings and Wednesday mornings, and would love to have you join and participate in an experience of discovering how our faith is the foundation of surviving grief and loss. So uh, it's uh, uh, going to be an experience as we're saying goodbye on our journey into the future. 
<clears throat> Drake is eager to read, uh, so let me pray. Oh Lord our God, open our hearts, open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as Drake reads our scripture and your word is proclaimed, we can hear with joy what it is you have to say to us today. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. Drake, thank you. Thanks be to God. Uh, we hear the Lord's voice coming to us. Jesus says, uh, resurrected form at the end of the gospel of saint matthew drake thanks for reading we hear with your voice fresh the words of jesus and remember i am with you always to the end of the age uh, those words come to us today we come and we continue to reach out toward one another reach out toward our God we're eager to belong we know that as we hunger for the Lord and as we reach to one another we do that in ways that uh, we can grow in our spirituality we can reach out into our God's uh, part of our life with prayer by reading the scriptures through times of solitude and knowing that our body is part of this journey and we discern we honor the Sabbath, keep it holy, and we offer every part of us uh, into what it means to be faithful people. Today, to discern is to acknowledge God's presence in all of life. Discernment. Acknowledging God's presence in all of life. In every choice we make, in our highs and in our lows, from the huge candy basket that Pastor Matt brought to us and the ways in which our God loves us beyond our imagination, we continue to listen for the way in which the Lord is involved in our lives at all times and in all seasons. Sometimes people talk about discernment being much like a Monday morning quarterback being able to describe what could have happened the day before. <clears throat> Are you aware that there's something else going on later today? Uh, yes, uh, it could be a fun afternoon. I, I know that uh, there are those who are ready for the Bengals to take it over. And uh, who day is uh, what we hear uh, being shared. And uh, there are those who are counting the different uh, times in Scripture that uh, there's reference to rams versus those uh, references to Bengal tigers. Uh, and they're in their debate. Come Monday morning, we're going to look over our shoulder and uh, wonder what happened. I, I know that as a rabid Broncos fan, I do care. I, I, I'm excited by the Super Bowl, looking forward to an afternoon of fun <coughs> for the commercials. going to be a great game. So here we are discerning, trying to discover how it is that we live in this world knowing that God's part of everything at all times and in all seasons. Some years ago, I was uh, helping with mission trips in the student ministries uh, in a previous church, and uh, the, the uh, student ministry director uh, her name is Judy Graff, and Judy Graff is one of my life friends and soulmates in ministry forever. Judy, uh, uh, years before she became the student ministries director at Loveland First United Methodist Church, she was in the church in Cortez, Colorado. Together we opened up a disciple Bible study curriculum, and we read the Bible for 34 weeks together in a small group. And she began to feel a call into ministry and a desire to work with uh, youth. And in that, she became 
an absolute miracle worker and a passionate uh, director of student ministries, and she's been the best. I uh, sought her out when I uh, was assigned to be in Loveland, Colorado, and said, uh, Judy, would you come and raise my daughters through adolescence as they uh, will be in your youth group? And uh, together we did great things. We did mission trips. And one of the mission trip seasons, we did uh, three journeys down to Brownsville, Texas, where we stayed. And we crossed the border each day to be at an orphanage in North uh, Mexico. And as we worked in this orphanage and met with children and um, did work around the orphanage itself, uh, lives were transformed and changed. And uh, many uh, have discovered ministry life as a result of those trips. I am remembering mission trips and the starting day and how we would pray ourselves into the journey. And uh, one of the things you need to know about Judy Graff is Judy had many gifts. One of them was the gift of prayer. And when Judy prayed, she prayed about everything. The minute and the magnificent. She prayed for every nuance of all things, and she prayed for a long time. And she was gifted in that prayer. So on the days when mission trips were about to go out, we would gather in the parking lot, and those who were uh, going on the trips, the uh, students and the adults, uh, they would be in a circle, and those who came to drop them off, family and friends, uh, others supporting, uh, would lay hands on the inner circle and we would have a prayer. But as that laying on of hands moment happened, I would share, we need to really thank uh, all who are making this possible. We thank our church who's funding this. We thank uh, each and every family who's sacrificing in different ways. And we thank God for the opportunity to be in a place where people are going to need us. So let's pray before we get in the vans. Lord, share the ride. Amen. Now, do you hear the contrast between Judy's prayer and mine? Lord, share the ride. Amen. To this day, I still connect with uh, kids adults who are youth in those days and they remember the simplicity of that prayer and to this day they continue to listen for the ways in which the Lord can share the ride. I don't know what discernment means for you but it is that reality that every part of our journey is shared with God. The highs and the lows, the, the experiences that we have anticipated and the nightmares that we're encountering and the joys that burst our souls. All are part of God with us. <clears throat> I'd like to explore that a little bit more by looking at a few scriptures and opening up the scriptures to help us relate to this idea of discerning God's presence in our world. I'd like to help us see that we can remember God's faithfulness in our past and we can trust God's faithfulness in our future. And that makes it possible for us to live in God's faithfulness now. And as we do that, we will awaken our own understanding of discerning God's faithfulness in our lives. Let's start with Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to open Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting at verse 4, called the Shema. You've heard it before. You'll hear it again in the Hebrew uh, uh, tradition and in Jewish synagogues. You'll hear this often. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Verse 12 reads, Take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 is the imminent reminder 
that God's faithfulness in our past is always part of our memory. Mm -hmm. A few months ago, I was listening on the radio and there was a song. The lyric was, I forgot, excuse me, I forgot to remember to forget all about you. That's a country western song. <laughs> I forgot to remember to forget all about you. We are about the absolute opposite of that. We are about remembering Remembering the Lord our God who brought us out of the land of Egypt, who has walked with us in times of our own struggle. And as we reflect back, we can understand God's faithfulness in our past. And that takes us into the authentic expression of Jesus at the end of the Gospel of St. Matthew when he says, Remember, my memory says, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, in chapter 12, wrote, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. God's faithfulness is yet to be. We can anticipate God's faithfulness in our future as we offer our lives into this transforming way of living with our faith. Romans chapter 12 is one of those memory verses that we have revisited over and over again. That it is by the grace of God that we live into our future. Remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age, Jesus said. James' letter in the New Testament, chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you is lacking wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. God's faithfulness here and now, the promises that we hear over and over again, that make us delve into the reality that we've never been abandoned. Remember the faithfulness of God in the past. Remember God's faithfulness yet to come in our future. Remember God's faithfulness now. And finally, a scripture that's from the prophet Micah, chapter 8, verse 6. Many of you know this by heart. He has told you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. Discerning God's presence in our lives is that authentic way in which we claim remembering God's faithfulness in our past, trusting God's faithfulness in our future, and living now in God's faithfulness, living God's faithfulness now. Hmm. Friends, did you hear it? When Jesus said, and remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, share the ride. Amen? Amen. Invite our music team back. They're going to help us sing, We Are Called. And as we sing verses, you're going to hear that we'll come, live in the light. We'll hear, come, open your heart. We'll hear, sing, sing a new song. For we are called, we are called to serve one another. And we are called to walk humbly with our God. As we're able, let's rise, let's sing.
We are called to serve one another. We are called to walk humbly with our God. We can do this. And I pray that from this time forth and forevermore, you'll pray, Lord, share the ride. Amen. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love always. Amen and amen.